Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with a two for video day today. First off, we had the uh, incredibly interesting Snacks 3D visual lightweight game engine, and now we have Raylib. So if you're looking for a more cross-platform, it is harder to get more cross-platform than Raylib. This is a cross-platform, I'm gonna call it a framework for creating 2D and 3D games. It's inspired by uh, Borland's BGI, a graphics library from the 90s, as well as Microsoft's XNA framework. Uh, two excellent inspirations, and the big thing about Raylib. Uh, it's a C library with bindings for every language you ever wanted. It is highly modular and is just so simple to learn. So if you want to get yourself into C programming or you need a, a low to mid-level uh, framework for doing development, it, its peers are things like SDL, SFML, Allegro, and so on. And of all of those ones I mentioned, Raylib is probably the easiest to learn. And in fact, all you really need to know to use it is this cheat sheet available right here. This is the list of every function in it broken down by modules. And modules are a big part of Raylib in general. So this is really, just print this off, put it on your wall, that's all the documentation you need to work with Raylib. And the cool thing on top of that is Raylib has an absolute ton of examples. So you wanna get in and learn something, head on over here, check out the examples under various different categories. So. Uh, if you want to learn physics examples, here's a number of physics examples running directly in the browser uh, that you can check out. Uh, it is a modular engine, as I mentioned earlier on, so it is built upon a number of different layers. So if you just want to use Raylib's audio library, you can. You want to just use their 3D loading for models, you can. Shapes, text, textures, core, those are all independently usable. Now these guys though, uh, so it's just textures, text, shapes, and models, or actually I guess textures, shapes, and models, not necessarily text, are built on top of the RLGL library, which is an abstractional way of the um, uh, OpenGL library underneath. And that in turn is built on top of the Raylib math library. And here you can see OpenGL uh, 1 through 3.3, as well as OpenGL ES renderers are available underneath. So you can use any one of these things individually, as long as it doesn't have other dependencies. And that is, Cool. It's one of the, the foundational things about uh, Raylib. Another thing about Raylib is uh, it's available, again, on a number of different platforms. There are a number of different tools out there, but there's also so many languages supported. Basically, if you can think of a programming language, uh, either Raylib provides or the Raylib community provides bindings for it. So here you can see the languages that are supported. And generally, it's not just one set of bindings. Like, for example, we got three sets of binding for PHP. There are three people out there that at least that like to suffer. <laughs> so you see here, basically, think of a language, Ren, Zig, Jai, uh, which I don't even think has been released yet, uh, OCaml, um, Beef, Cobol, Harbor, I, like there's languages here I've never even heard of, ChaiScript, they've got bindings. So that's one of the really cool things about Raylib is it's a nice foundational library for just about whatever language or technology or platform you want to work with. So head on back over here, where did we go? You'll also see we have a number of different platforms supported, including basically you know Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Raspberry Pi, various different Linux installs, Android, and so on. Um, so you can basically create any game for any language on any platform you want with Raylib. It's a really cool library in that regard. And that coolness actually just got them um, sponsored for a Google open source peer bonus. And there's not a ton of people that actually win that award. It's a nomination, I got it here somewhere, uh, for um, uh, designed to reward external open source contributors nominated by Googlers for their exceptional contributions to open source. And this is the first group of winners in 2021. And if we head on through the list here, there's not a single games project on here other than our beloved Raylib. So that is definitely a cool win. Congratulations. What do you get for winning the Google open source peer bonus? One million dollars. Actually, now you get like a gift card and recognition, but it's still cool to be recognized. Um, and so we're back now to the 3.7 release. So it's been about four months since the previous release. As you can see, they also won that award, which is kind of cool. And then we've got some things uh, functionally done here. One of the things they've done is they redesigned the RLGL modular. Some of this is like for future growth and um, explanation. Uh, Expansion, ex exp expansion, that's the word. Expansion, expansion, expansion uh, in the future. Uh, important change in the Raylib architecture. Now RLGL functionality is self-contained in the module and used by higher level layers. Uh, those layers are the ones exposed functionality in the main API, for example, shaders, mesh materials. We saw that uh, the module breakdown earlier on. 
Uh, multiple RLGL functions have been renamed for consistency. In this case, they follow the RL prefix convention. Uh, functions have also been reorganized internally by categories and gen texture functions have been removed from the library and moved to the models material library. Uh, so again, a very modular engine and one of the core modules that it depends on just got improved. Uh, the redesign, the VR simulator and a stereo rendering mechanism, brand new API has been added, more comprehensive and better support with Raylib. New stereo render can be, can, can be combined with render texture and shader APIs, allowing them uh, users to manage the FBO and distortion shaders directly. Uh, added new file access callback system. Uh, several new callback systems have been added uh, to the API to allow custom file loaders. A nice example. Again, there's an example for everything in Raylib. Um, it's a Raylib integration with the virtual file system FizzFS. Uh, added GLTF animation support. Uh, GLTF is a probably the open uh, 3D file format out there. Uh, it's the preferred models file format. Also, the same thing for Godot. It's the preferred format there as well. Uh, it's meant to do for uh, like WebGL models originally, but it's just turned into a nice real-time uh, 3D interchange format. Uh, so that now has GLTF support in there. That one's definitely nice. And it was added by someone in the community, which is always cool. Sign that a... Uh, um, a project is growing is when it's not just the core contributor doing things, when it's actually got more and more contributors coming from the outside, adding features and functionality in. Also added music streaming support from memory uh, and they renew the enum values for consistency. So those are the major uh, things here. If you wanna get into the weeds of what's new, uh, the change log, there's, there's a lot more uh, you know, smaller fixes and changes and improvements and so on available in there. I will have that available in the linked article down below, but those are the big ones. So we got the RLGL refactoring, the new VR examples and uh, VR functionality, sorry, not examples, uh, a new access, file access callback with an example to go with it, GLTF animation support, which is definitely kind of cool, music streaming, and some uh, renaming and refactoring of the engine itself. So that is the Raylib 3.70 release. Um, again, congratulations on winning the Google open source uh, bonus for 2021. Again, that, it's always nice to be acknowledged. If you are looking once again for a low level, not low level, uh, What's the word I want? Like if you wanna work more with code than with a full-blown game engine, uh, Raylib is an excellent choice. And once again, we saw earlier on, there is bindings for whatever programming language you want to work with, and it's modular, so you can pick out and use the pieces you want. Uh, we got a ton of different examples here. We've got uh, improving 3D support, including again, GLTF uh, animations now in this particular release. You have support for shaders. You have a uh, audio library built in there. It's a... Uh, and then of course you got physics support as well. And there is a couple of tools for it uh, as well on top of that. So again, this is all based off of, uh, it's available on uh, GitHub. We were there for the release notes, but let's just head on over there so you can see it again. Uh, it's an open source project. It is obviously very actively updated. This release just happened a couple of hours ago. Um, it's uh, under the Zlib license, which is a very permissive open source license. And you can learn more at www.raylib.com. They also have a Discord server. Um, go ahead and check that out. Ray is also a uh, ambassador on the uh, Game From Scratch uh, Discord server as well, which is linked down below. So if you have any questions, just shout out to Ray and he'll do his best to help you, I bet. Uh, definitely an interesting project, one that I would recommend checking out and one that just released version 3.17. Let me know what you think. Have you used Raylib? Are you going to use Raylib? Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.